Welcome to This Week in West Hempstead, coming to you by Zoom today and sponsored by Stern and Spiegel LLP 516-873-1683. Let us solve your problems. And by our friends at Tiffany Dry Cleaners, pick up and delivery in West Hempstead and surrounding communities, 718-309-5222, as well as by our friends at IND Glot Market, 327 Hempstead Avenue with all of your kosher shopping needs. Here your host, David and Norm. Take it away, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, Dan. And uh, hey, Norm, how's it going? It's good. We're, we're, yeah. uh, we're all remote today. Yeah. Greetings from the uh, from the Buckeye State uh, in Ohio uh, with family. And uh, but, you know, nothing more important than uh, what's going on in West Hempstead. So uh, just ready to dive into uh, to the stories. And we so got a whole bunch of them. What is happening in West Hempstead, Dave? Well, uh, first story is uh, the Capri Motel. It's uh, it's definitely in the headlines, and uh, uh, the uh, Don Clavin uh, had a press conference uh, this week. Um, basically, the the upshot is they're going to be moving towards uh, eminent domain, or I think that's the uh, the direction that we always thought, but it seems mm -hmm. to be coming true. Uh, they're going to be having a hearing in December to. Uh, uh, to make that decision, I'm not sure because, you know, I don't know all the legalese if they can just take it over without a hearing and all that kind of stuff. But that seems where we're going. Well, it seems to be a claim that there's a tremendous amount of uh, of uh, pressure on the police department. Six, they talked about 600 police calls over the course of two years. Um, and so under eminent domain, I guess they have a right to take the property. They'll just fight about how much they have to pay him. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big fan of this, I, I have to say. I mean, we're not constitutional lawyers here or anything, <laughs> but I, I think there's the town has a lot to prove here that there's some reason why they should be arbitrarily allowed to take over somebody's property. And again, I've said this before, it's not that I want all the issues that are going on there to stay in town, but I, I really don't love the way they're going about this. Well, yeah, it's... It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. David, did you was uh, did you get any information from the attorney for for the owners? No, we 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 really haven't uh, at this point. But you know, to to kind of um, play on what uh, Dan was saying, this whole idea of eminent domain, typically, and again, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't even play one on TV. But you know, from my understanding, is there has to be a reason the government. You know, if they're building Hoover Dam, they got to take over the area to build Hoover Dam. Uh, when New York City took over Central Park to build the land in Central Park, you know, there, there was some there's some very, you know, uh, historical reasons to use eminent domain. Not exactly sure if that relates to what's going on locally. But but again, we all know that there's, you know, situations going on there. But uh, it's still a business, or was a business anyway. So I, 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 I'm really confused at this point, to be honest. Yeah, we'll have to see how it plays out, you know, come these additional meetings. Uh, and in other news, uh, sadly, we have a, a one-year anniversary on the passing of Thomas Molina. Thomas was the young 12-year-old who was killed on Woodfield Road. Um and a year ago, and uh, the uh, the memorial for him, or the makeshift memorial, is still up in the location where, unfortunately, he got hit. Um, and you know, even though there has been progress and a lot of talk about what's been going on at Woodfield, still as of today, there is no additional traffic light, no plans for stop signs. Um, I know the traffic light will go up eventually. Um, but it's a real sad anniversary to mark that uh, one year passing. Yeah, I was actually, um, I stopped by there this afternoon just to go take a look. Uh, you'll see I'm, I'm putting some pictures in here right now for you to take a look. Um, you can see there's light poles that are, are in the ground. There's no hardware. Um, this, this one picture I have here where you can see the pole there right next to the memorial for uh young Thomas Molina. Um, so something's there, but not what we've been waiting for. And I, I don't remember when that that uh, uh, press conference was on the corner there. Uh, you know, we're sitting here staring at some empty polls. So 
Yeah, no, no, but they they did a lot of infrastructure work. There's a lot of underground stuff in. Sensors are in. They they pulled some wire in. It's really a day's work to just hang the uh, lights. So I, I think they're mostly there, and I'm not sure what they're waiting for, but I, I think they're close. They then also have to paint the road with speed um, warnings. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, you know, again, like everything else, it is progress, and uh, we are looking forward to that light being installed not sure if it's ultimately going to have the desired effect, but, you know, it's certainly a step in the right direction. And uh, uh, we thank those who uh, really worked, uh, put in a lot of effort to uh, to get those lights installed. Right. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention is uh, while, I, while I'm while i in Ohio, it seemed like uh, West Hempstead got a little bit of rain. It, yeah. it was a little damp on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did mean, a little well, bit of swimming. You know, I went to pick up my daughter in Lindbrook at the uh, Long Island Railroad Station. It was flooded within three blocks of the station. Could not get near it. Just made it past uh, um, the pond. Hall's Pond was overflowing, massively overflowing, because it's fed from the highways. And uh, it overflowed Hempstead Avenue, which was eventually shut down by the police department. Yeah. I think some cars were actually stuck in the middle of Hempstead Avenue, if I'm not mistaken. I was talking to somebody on the fire department, and I mean, they spent a fair amount of time on Friday rescuing people from their cars who probably figured, oh, there's some water. But if you figure that, that the pond overflowed and was like drowning Hempstead Avenue, that's a lot of water. Would have been a good time to stay yeah. home. It was it was a foot deep when I went through it. I may have been one of the last cars to make it through, um, and I was I was pretty scared. I was on a jeep, so I, I was high enough up. But the car in front of me made it, so I, I took a chance. But you really you really shouldn't take chances on stuff like this because you do end up in the middle of something that you need help to get out of. Yeah, you know, one of our uh, neighboring communities, uh, Valley Stream, they seem to have gotten the most rain. They got over seven point six inches of rain, which is just a an unbelievable amount and you know this area really hasn't seen something like that in a long time so uh you know i'm not sure what the causes are and we can we're not going to go down the uh, uh global warming debate or issues or anything <laughs> along those lines but there was just a heck of a lot of water probably enough to even fill up uh echo park pool which apparently was the case because the pool's now filled up yeah, it looks great. Uh, nice interview there. Uh, um, I think you were talking to the pool, uh, Dan. So I uh, will actually, as a matter of fact, why don't we take a break? I'll bring in that little little clip I just did a little bit earlier uh, standing outside of Echo Park Pool. Hi, everyone. Dan here at Echo Park Pool. As you may be able to see behind me, there is actually water in the pool. We've already blown past the October 1st date that uh, Don Clavin told us the pool was going to be open. Uh, it looks like they might simply be testing filters and things like that, but uh, at the moment there's water in the pool. There's just nobody in the pool swimming because that's not ready yet. So if you want to keep going, Marco, Polo. As you could see, the pools were filled. You might have noticed there were a couple of guys behind doing some work. There were guys up on the roof. Um, it's great, as I said, that the pool is filled, but nobody's actually swimming right now. Um, I forget, I think it was Adam or somebody told us that, that they were testing the filters, which I'm sure needs to be done. But if they put, you know, 5,000 gallons of water into these pools or whatever went in just so they can drain it another week, seems a little unnecessary to me. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, it was definitely uh, someone who commented on our Facebook site about, you know, what a waste of water. But uh, I, I, I do assume that this is part of their... Um, trials of getting the whole pool complex up and running. You know, it's a shame no one can go swimming because it has been in the 80s in uh, West Hempstead all week. So, you know, it may have been one of those uh, rare opportunities, but at least there's progress. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that certainly within the coming weeks, everything should open up. But as usual, we hear absolutely nothing. So we're just guessing. Yeah, and as I said, we we uh, seem to have missed Don Clavin's deadline of it being October first. Uh, yeah, I, it's just again no information. So, yeah, all right, but but there is progress. So that's the story with the pool. Uh, why don't we take a minute to hear from one of our sponsors? Tiffany Dry Cleaner is ready to handle all your cleaning, laundering, and dry cleaning needs. We offer free pickup and delivery Sunday to Friday in all communities. Give us a shot. 
So also on the weekend, uh, in the rain, there was a whole bunch of uh, community events that were going on. Uh, unfortunately, the homecoming parade got washed out, uh, but the football game did take place and all the activities around the, uh, uh, the middle, middle school were all there and it looked like it was very, very well attended. They had a carnival um, or something like that, I think. Yeah, they had a carnival there and uh, uh, we're going to be putting a whole photo essay together um, regarding, uh, we got some pictures from, from the middle school, so we'll be sharing that uh, soon in, um, on the site. Uh, but in addition to, um, to the football game and the carnival, we also had the all-year West Hempstead High School reunion. And uh, to me, that's, that was a very exciting event. Uh, it was uh, high school graduates from all years, including the first graduating year of which uh, Carl Reesterer Sr., uh, our, our Baker extraordinaire, uh, was a member of that class and he helped organize this event, which took place at the Plattdeutsch um, restaurant, um, which is in uh, Franklin Square. I may be pronouncing that uh, incorrectly, but it was very, very well attended. They had uh, about 220 or 230 people there. And uh, you can check out the images on westhempstedecho.com. That was that's, uh, that's 1953. Amazing. Was that first year, David? Uh, I believe it was 1955 that, okay. uh, that Carl um, graduated. So you're talking about 70 years good 70 years since uh, the school opened. So he's really at the very beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, glad to see that there was a, uh, there was a huge turnout. And um, guess who provided the cake? It was Reesterers. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was it was a really impressive cake. So uh, we, we wish congratulations to the uh, graduating classes of the uh, West Hempstead High School. And uh, we look forward to more reunions in the future. How uh, how'd the Rams do for the uh, homecoming? Oh, you know, we really shouldn't be talking about the Rams. So, uh, unfortunately, the Rams are now 0-4. Whoa. Um, it's, it's, it's been a really tough go, uh, but we're hoping that they're going to turn the season around. Now, here's the good news. The good news is, is that uh, on Saturday, they'll be playing the Lawrence Golden Tornadoes in Lawrence, and it just so happens that the Lawrence football team is also 0-4. So one of these teams is going to have a victory you know, when this is all done. And we're, 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 we got a shot. Win. We got a shot this week. I think we got a huge shot to, uh, to get that first win. So uh, we're excited about that, and uh, we'll bring you those results next week. Sounds good. And I think that's going to do it for, uh, for this week in West Hempstead. I want to thank you, Norm. I want to thank you, Dan. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I look forward to being back in West Hempstead next week and back in the studio, and uh, we'll bring you all the uh, news and information that's relevant to our community. So thank you very much. Stay dry, everybody. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you would like to sponsor our programs, much like Stern and Spiegel and Tiffany Dry Cleaners and IND Glot Market, reach out to us at sales at westhempstedecho.com.